Hello Aquarius, Aquarius Rising and Aquarius Moon people. This is your weekly astrological and card forecast for the week starting December 26th, 2016. It's almost the end of the year. And a quick reminder for you guys, your monthly astrology horoscopes for January are up on a playlist of their own on the main channel page. And I also put up an hour and 45 minute long lecture on the uh, astrology of 2017 if you'd like to listen to that while you do some holiday driving. And again, don't forget, classes are on at this point in time. They are up for registration, starting online tarot classes and online astrology webinars in January. The first tarot class is on the 8th, and then I've got astrology webinars coming mid-month. So if you would like to reserve a spot for yourself, you do need to go to my website, integrativemysticism.com, and you will be all good to go. So, what is going on with your astrology this week, Aquarius? Well, we do have quite a lot happening um, in your third house of communications as it relates to your ninth house of worldliness, of expansion, of higher knowledge, um, experimentation, uh, your, your academia, your spiritual life. And what is happening is that Jupiter is in your ninth house. Jupiter is in your ninth house kind of breaking down boundaries, popping bubbles, you know, really opening our mind, expanding our opportunities, but also at the same time giving us a whole lot of new experiences to educate ourselves and also further our career, or perhaps even further our, um, our spiritual path, our spiritual practice. But it's coming into an opposition with Uranus early in the week, and that'll last a few days, Monday through Wednesday. And for a lot of you, this clash is between your third house of communications, how you communicate with others and how others communicate with you, and opportunities that come up, and create a conflict of interest. And the conflict of interest is, well, are you able to kind of stay a, you know, a, a, a big fish in a small pond? That's a, actually a good question for you to ask yourself every once in a while. You're being put on the spot to do something for yourself that may, again, move you away from you know, what is small and comfortable in the social and networking wheelings and dealings you've been dealing with. This could actually be an opportunity for a graduation or a promotion, or even a once-in-a-lifetime travel opportunity well, maybe not once in a lifetime, but it's definitely an opportunity to expand your horizons in a big way, but it would require you to get out of your own comfort zone, your own neighborhood, your own backyard. And I highly suggest that you take it, but again, you're being put on the spot. Are you comfortable with doing this, even though it may con come contrary to what you, you know, how you feel people will treat you after you get to the top of the mountain? Later on in the week, we do have Saturn, the planet of restrictions and boundaries, forming a tense square from Sagittarius in your 11th house of friendships and social networking to Chiron in your second house of earned income. And Chiron represents sort of like our baggage, okay? It's the wounds that we have yet to heal. Some people call it the wounded healer, I call it our baggage. And when we have Saturn in the 11th house square to Chiron in the second house, some difficult financial conversations can arise between friends, or among friends, or roommates. And this could also be a situation where we find out that um, maybe a financial plan or financial opportunity that we have could cause some clashes with some friends at work, but we do need to bring it up. This can also have to do with intangible valuables, uh, such as, say, our, you know, just the, the relationship in general that we have with this friend. You know, sometimes our differences, even though they are good differences, um, in, in the wrong hands, or maybe if, you know, if somebody's insecure, can cause problems. Maybe somebody clearly is more intelligent than the other one. Maybe somebody clearly is uh, more talented artistically in some way than the other. And those things will come up. But it's not in the interest of competing with one another. It's almost talking about where that does drive a wedge, and how do we stop it from driving a wedge? So what's going on with your cards, then? Well, we do have for your spiritual advice, we do have the card of the Elven Touch. This is talking about a recovery, or a revival, for a lot of you Aquarius people. And a lot of this week can be talking about second chances coming your way. Uh, second chances in love, second chances in money, second chances in fun. Because the Elven Touch does talk a lot about a need to pay attention to where you are getting to take a chance you were too afraid to take before. And I think that with the Elven Touch, um, you know, you're probably going to find yourself in a position to do it, uh, finally. Uh, the timing is much better now, but at the same time, you know, there could be some conflicts of interest. We will cross each bridge when we come to it, but are you willing to turn something down a second time? 
For your Earth sector, when it comes to your work in finances, we do have the Queen of Pentacles, inverted. Now this card can say there will be some challenges with an Earth sign, a Virgo, Taurus, or a Capricorn. Um, tends to lean more towards the Taurus side with the Queen of Pentacles, and I feel like this might be somebody who is taking advantage of you in a lot of ways. Um, because when we get the Queen of Pentacles reversed, we tend to see somebody who is, she's got a real problem with waste, and she's got a real problem with trying to, again, get other people to do for her what she needs to be doing for herself. Now, we could be spending money on her, we could be doing extra work for her. This might not necessarily even show up at work. This could actually be a friend or a relative that we, need, that we do need to, you know, again, redraw the boundary around. Financially, for you, the Queen of Pentacles reverse says, be careful about opportunities that may come with, again, a bit of a social price. Um, if you are look, hunting for money real bad, don't, you know, don't sell your soul to the devil for this, because there will be somebody who will be making some kind of offer, but uh, I, I think the fine print is just a bit too damning in this situation. For your communications with air, when it comes to your friends, your relatives, the others in your life, we do have the Page of Swords, inverted. And this card is basically saying, you know, we may actually have to make uh, have a sit-down with a friend or relative who's reaching the wrong conclusion about a choice that we've made or a recent action that we've taken or something we'll be taking this week. Because the Page of Swords, inverted, says this person is actually going about it all wrong or has reached the wrong conclusion. This can also indicate issues with rumor mills. People not necessarily getting all the facts straight. You know, you think about that, or maybe they do have the facts right, but they're missing the point entirely. That can also happen on the schoolyard and in news. But I think that with the uh, Page of Swords inverted, what can happen is that, again, th is this person ready to be corrected? That's always a question. Because some people with the Page of Swords inverted tend to cling to the conclusions that they reach. Sometimes their ego is more invested than being correct than they are being informed. Some people don't like to learn. It's going to be a really interesting, stubborn conversation to have with a friend or a relative. For your challenge this week with fire, we do have the Nine of Cups inverted. Interesting card to get as a challenge because it actually does say that we are having a wish getting granted this week, a desire being fulfilled. It, it, you know, so in essence, this is a you know th this is a yes answer for you. Uh, Aquarius, if you're trying to get something off the ground, or you're trying to actually, you know, maybe even get some kind of uh, relationship or some kind of plan underway. But the Nine of Cups inverted says, be careful, because you do have a bigger role to play in this than you think. Sometimes the Nine of Cups inverted, as I've said it before a million times, and I'll say it again, can show up like a monkey's paw. You know, the wish is just meant to be granted by whoever's granting the wish. It's not, you know, the, the wish granter's job is not to interpret your intention. So you've got to mind the hubris in the wish that you make, you know, articulate it correctly because everything will be taken very literally. Sometimes with the Nine of Cups inverted, you may find out that you get exactly what you want, uh, but at the same time you want more. And that's okay. Sometimes that can turn into something more. For your emotions with water and your romantic life, we do have the Three of Swords upright. So there's going to be some conflict of interest and definitely some feelings of, maybe even some feelings of betrayal surrounding an issue that goes on with love this week. For those of you who are single, um, a love opportunity or romantic opportunity may actually stir up some weird feelings in friends or in others. Sometimes we may end up getting an opportunity to date our friend's crush, and we both had the same crush on the same person at the same time, and guess what? We won. Sometimes with the Three of Swords upright, though, we may find ourselves in a position where we need to watch out for accidentally doing something that our crush may take as a betrayal. Tread lightly with this kind of card, though, because, again, it is avoidable. The Three of Swords, for those of you who are currently coupled, is basically saying, again, be careful about feelings of betrayal between you and your partner. Sometimes the things that we say and the things that we do or the things that we don't do uh, can actually lead our partner or maybe our partner will be leading us to feel like we are currently being betrayed in some fashion. Sometimes this might not necessarily even happen with you guys as a couple, but this may be how you and your partner handle one of your children. If a child is feeling neglected or a child is feeling like you're playing favorites, they could also end up feeling betrayed because of the things that they see us do or not do. So be very careful in, you know, in, in the way you actually walk on those eggshells this week. So that is your forecast, Aquarius. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you'd like to get a session, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.